My name is Nicole Alligood. I'm the Niagara Specialist for Ohio History Connection. I am also a member of the Delaware Nation of Oklahoma. I am also a member of the Turtle Clan. I read the article about the 100th anniversary of American Indians being U.S. citizens. I learned about this as a child. I was raised by my grandparents, and I remember my grandfather telling me that he wasn't a U.S. citizen until he was 10 years old. He was born in 1914. And that's kind of sobering to think about. So technically, I'm a third generation American citizen, and that's a very weird place to be when this is the country you, your ancestors lived in. This was their country. For me, the American Indian Citizenship Act of 1924 really means survival in the face of erasure. Um, so that citizenship was something that was a final stage of the United States' attempts to assimilate my people and make them into one thing, into Americans. What, what the act allowed for is, at least from today we'd say, it allows for us to be citizens of the U.S. and our tribe. Um, but that's something that we basically created because the Citizenship Act's goal was to absorb us and dissolve us. And tribal people's maintaining of ourselves is what created a dual citizenship status. The act didn't give us that. We, we maintained that. Hi, David. It's nice to meet you. Even if it is virtually, it's very nice to meet you. Your article was wonderful. I really enjoyed reading it. It's very thoughtful and heartfelt. And I just wondered, what does this anniversary mean to you as a tribal citizen? It's really interesting, right? So I uh, wrote my dissertation on citizenship, right? And um, the Indian Citizenship Act uh, features very briefly within it. And it, it's basically reduced to one page. And, and, yeah. and it's so much more than that. How does that make you feel to, to think that allotment and the Dawes Act and all of that is why weren't we always citizens? Absolutely, right? And I think part of it is that, you know, and so, some Native nations never wanted to become citizens, right? Never, ne always wanted to have their separate sovereignty, never wanted to become Americans. Yes. Um, and then as the United States came in and enveloped Native nations, you know, Native nations were, Native people were denied citizenship, right? Yeah. Um, but I think an important thing in addition to that, that I think resonates with other minority communities as well, is that not only were Native people not citizens, but even when Native people became citizens, they weren't treated as full citizens, right? Um, both in the ways that resonate with other minority communities, right? So, you know, um, a good example is Arizona and New Mexico, where Native people were denied the right to vote, right, who were living on reservations. Yes. Um, but I think in important ways that are very specific to Native people, right? And so the federal government said uh, in, in Supreme Court cases in the early 20th century, even though you're a citizen, the federal government can still come in and impose assimilation policies on you, can create unique laws like banning the sale of alcohol, um, can control your land in ways that it doesn't other citizens. And so Native people, both on the state level, yes, like other, other minority communities, but in more importantly, on the federal level, were not treated as equal citizens and were considered wards of the federal government, which <laughs> Guy Jennison, this one a uh, tribal leader for the Ottawa tribe of Oklahoma uh, said that what that meant is they're the incompetent stepchildren of the Commissioner of Indian exactly. Affairs. Right? That is what my grandfather always said. We are wards of the U.S. government. Just realizing that I am, you know, we're the only people in this country that carry a federal ID card. You know, no one else has to do that. And I look back to one thing that I was really... I found interesting was that our our religion was outlawed up until the late 70s. How can you consider us citizens of the United States when you deny us the basic rights? It, it's tough. So the American Indian Citizens Act of 1924 was 
incredibly important and it's surprisingly late. And I think it's, it's complicated for, for American Indian people, of course. And as an organization, um, our job is that we can't shy away from how complicated it is. Um, our job as the history organization for Ohio is that we tell the history and we tell it honestly. Um, and that means that we, we have conversations that are sometimes hard. Um, and people have hurtful feelings. I mean, in 1924, it's, it's really not that long ago. It's that part of history that, you know, sometimes people don't know how to talk about it. We don't know how to start talking about it. What does it mean to be a citizen? Um, so many of us take that for granted. You're a citizen of the United States and that we don't think about what that means, which means we don't think about what it means to not be a citizen of the United States. I do feel like this is my home, this country. It's definitely my home. But it still seems that a hundred years after citizenship, we are still somewhat wards of the government, somewhat set apart. And our sovereignty is, is important to us because it defines who we are as a group. But for me, it means that this is my country, this is where my people came from. So I feel sometimes that maybe I'm more more than just a citizen of a government. <laughs>